hustler, baby. I'm a hustler, yeah. baby. I know heartbreaks. Setbacks, bitch. If I crap out, I'm sure I'ma get back. I've been through the ups and downs, you know I get around. So to me, so to me. what's going on, y'all? It's your man June Archer here. You are now inside the winner's circle. My guest today, good friend of mine, my brother. You know him, you love him. The incredible, the amazingly talented Shane Johnson. Shane, what's going on, brother? Hey, you know. Listen, we're here. I'm I'm so happy to see you. So much to to talk about. So much to dive in. But I have to start as I always uh, do. How have you been? Uh, we are now probably, hopefully, ninety percent of the way out of the pandemic. But how are you? How's the family? How was life treating you as you've been navigating this power universe? Well, you know that's, that's interesting that you brought up the the COVID thing. I I don't really think about the COVID thing too much because it was. Um, you know, it was kind of a blip. It shut us down and it made everything kind of go virtual, which is annoying because we used to we used to come together as a family a lot, mm. which really connected power and the first season of Ghost. After once COVID hit, it kind of like it, it, it kind of made us all take off into our different directions and just come together to film and then go back. So that 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 kind of sucked because we we used to really it used to feel like a family. Right. That was an old school way of doing things. Yeah. And, and, I, and I don't know that we'll ever go back to that. I don't know that anybody will go back to that, you know, because it's just too easy to be like, hey, let's do a table read. And you just go boop and yeah. everybody just sits in their underwear doing it, you know, <laughs> as opposed to showing up and everybody's got to get dolled up and, you know, go and everything's catered. And it's, you know, that, those were events. And um, but it was the thing that, that was important for the family was that it was the only time that both sides of the law and all these different factions actually saw each other. Because if you think about it, like, like I never worked with most of these, a lot of people on the show. Like, I never, if I saw them, it was because I would, there was a problem. Right. You know? <laughs> and so, like, I only had maybe in the entirety of power, maybe like three scenes with Omari. Three scenes. Mm. With Joe, I think I had two scenes. So, you know, that gave us the chance to connect, having the table reads and all that stuff. So uh, I, that, I know I got off track, but to me, that's kind of interesting. No, it's, it's perfect because I know that for every actor who gets in the business, one of the, the greatest things, especially with music, but especially acting, is going on auditions. Now it is more of, hey, do a self tape, right? It's, it's yeah. can, getting together and say, hey, Shane, let's get together and, and do these lines outside of just the table reads and let's, let's go out and have a, a, a bite to dr or something to drink and let's try to get that, that cohesiveness going, that energy, that synergy going. Yeah, you know, the, tr the trick I think is is that we have to be pliable. Mm. We it's have to be word. pliable. That's a good word. Because um, there's that nostalgia in me that goes like, why can't things be the way they were? And... And I fought that. I fought that for a while. And the reality is, is it's just it's just never going back. We're never yeah. we're never going to be back in the audition room like like we were. It's just never going to happen. Once they once they kind of like cross that line, that was it. That's it. That's it. I mean, it'll go back to a degree because you know certain people will be like, well, I want to see these people together, and there'll right. be moments. But for the most part, man, I haven't been in an audition room. And I've been working. You know, right. I've been doing stuff. And I haven't been in an audition room for probably four years. Do you miss that process though? Oh, a thousand percent, a yeah. thousand percent, because that's when I, I feel like one of my abilities, you know, you have to, uh, there, there's acting, right? Right. Like having your skill set is important, but there's also going, people want to work with you. So part of the thing is going in the room and being seen and talking to people and connecting with people is making people go, do I want to spend a month or three months or, or 10 yeah. years, 10 years like with power, do I want to spend 10 years with this motherfucker? You know what I mean? And, um, and so just from a tape, from a self tape, you, you don't, I mean, all you're getting is like what they want you to see. Right, it's pretty much a highlight reel. It's a highlight reel and it's also just what they have, they have like carved out and gone, this is what I'm going to show you. But when someone walks in the room, before they even open their mouth and start acting, it, you know, casting directors would, would tell you this too, I'm sure. When you walk in the room, half of the audition's already done. Hmm. Half of it's already done. They've gone like, wow. they've gone, no, no. Or they've gone like, hmm, okay, interesting. 
oh, I like him, or he's got, you know what, he might be more right for that other part. Like, they start doing that stuff. But if it's just this, here you go, boop. Hi, I'm Shane Johnson. I'm <laughs> six foot two, based in Los Angeles. And then, you know, and then you do your audition, and then you, you know, sign off. It's like, they, they don't That's get anything. crazy. It's crazy. They don't shit. get anything. And it's hard, you know, you don't chemistry and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's a different world now. But, like I said, we have to be pliable because if you fight it, then you're left out of the party. You have been the longest running cast member. You are the fabric. How has it felt? And this season was the most watched debut of the yeah. franchise, how did that feel when you heard about those numbers and you heard about what you guys accomplished this 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 new season? I mean that that's that's pretty wild because you know you just assume after after you get to a certain point in the show that the stuff starts tapering off and the fact that it's still gaining momentum is like is unbelievable. Um, and you know I I really I'm really proud of I'm proud of this of what we've done I'm proud of what I've done and. You know, going from day one, my first, you know, I was in that first episode, I had one line. And I was just, I wasn't a regular on the show. Right. I had one line. I just said some bullshit to Angela. And um, one line. It was, uh, I, and it was, congrats on the promotion, Angela. That was it. That was my only line. And here we are, 10 years later, you know. But it's the execution, <laughs> though, Shane, right? A lot of people... They get into certain situations and things, and they're like, "Oh, it's a small part," or "I'm just hiking the ball." They 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 dumb down or belittle the part that could be the intricate part that could actually land you that next piece. So how important is it to when you have the opportunity to show up to show out? Well, yeah, I think that's the thing is we have to. Uh, you know, one of the things that's the the hardest for an, I think an actor, and by the way, I think this is true in any business. Is what is your what is your subtext mm. you know what's what's the engine that's running underneath the hood because like you said I, I all my line was this was a simple uh congrats on the promotion angela but i was like okay well who is this guy how does he feel about about angela is he actually telling her congrats or is he saying you know screw you right that was my promotion and so that kind of laid just that one ener that energy which was running under the hood i think kind of laid the groundwork for six years of me trying to like best her you know what i mean right and um and so that was you know that's kind of the and i think it's like that in life too it's like well what's what's running under the hood you know um nothing's nothing's face value no but but you you managed to allow us the culture to hate you Sax, to feel bad for you, Sax, <laughs> yeah. to love you, Sax, to Sax, you're doing too much, Sax, to Sax, what are you doing? What, what did you pull as inspiration to allow the ebb and flow of Cooper Sax? I mean, if I'm being real, I've got to give it up to, to Courtney because Courtney saw she had the vision for, for these characters and she, she wove all this stuff together. And now I'm not saying that she wasn't also inspired by me kind of going like, oh, this is what he's bringing. But the reality is, is I'm just saying what's on the page. Right. You know, I'm just saying what's on the page. Now, somebody else saying those same lines would have it would have been a very different ball game. But but the fact is, is they kind of put stuff on the page and I kind of go, OK, in the first few years, I'll tell you, I was kind of new to I was new to Instagram and new to social media and stuff like that because it's 10 years ago. Right. I was like, why do I need a stupid Instagram, right? And, and so the first few years, the amount of hate that I got, the amount of like people making such like violent comments to me, I was just like, what the hell is that? What is this? It's time to get, time to get an account so I can stand up for myself. <laughs> I was like, well, hold on a second. And, um, and, and I think what it was is I, it took me a while to kind of realize like, oh, the, all this hatred is like a, 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 a warm bath of, of love, you know? That, and, and it's like, that's... I like how you put that. <laughs> it's true, man. It's like, it's like the more hate I got, the more I was like, all right, I'm doing this right. Right. You know? Um, and, but it took me a while. It took Shane a while to kind of embrace that because it felt personal. It felt, because, by the way, the comments are personal. People, people have a hard time separating. They have a hard time 
I'm certain they back you in the corner and like, so people say sax. <laughs> you're like, hold on. No, people Shane. be like, <laughs> it's Shane. If you don't die in the next episode, I'm gonna come and kill you myself. <laughs> You know, I'm like, well, hold on a second. Like, I've got a wife and kids, and I'm not Cooper Sacks. But, um, but it was, uh, you know, I, thought I started to get to where every time someone would be like, man, I hate your guts. I can't wait for you to die. I'd be like, all right. I did it. I nailed it. Yeah, which is a weird thing to kind of, you know, um, to hear negativity as a, as a positive. But, um, but the more hate, the more hatred I got, the more I felt like, all right, I'm in, I'm in this. I'm 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 touching a nerve, and I also felt necessary. Right, right. Because you know you gotta have, you gotta have. You know, not that I'm saying I'm the Joker, but like, who's the Batman without the Joker? Absolutely. You know, he's Absolutely. just up there on the on the top of a building, going like, oh, I got nothing to do. You know. <laughs> I want to I want to ask you something. That I think a lot of you might be thinking about. You've had the the privilege and honor to work with uh, some amazing cast members. But I want to know, I want to settle it right here now. Who's the better attorney, Proctor or McLean? Well, only one of them is still alive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's funny. I feel, like, I feel like here's the thing. Proctor, I know that people just go hard for Proctor which always kind of surprised me because I felt like Proctor was just protecting himself. Yes. He was kind of like, How, what do I got to do to survive? And he would have turned, he would have turned on anybody if it meant that he could survive. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and by the way, he was, uh, I think he was, he was hiding some, some information at one point, like on a laptop, like he was trying to, he was, he was, you know, girding his loins, trying to protect himself. And, um, and I feel like with McLean, McLean is, is more we don't see him in action a lot as a, like as an attorney but what we know is that if the if the bread is in the right spot absolutely he's your man you, listen you got to scratch the proper itch you, you you're not coming to mclean with just you know what i mean i i've never <laughs> seen i mean i remember when i was i was going like hold on a second we are all in the wrong business <laughs> because every time someone would come up and say hey listen uh I need you. I need you to like get me out of this jam, or you know, my aunt needs some stuff. And he'd be like, "All right, well, I need fifty grand cash right now, and then we'll talk." It's like, what? Somebody just somebody needs a lawyer, and the first thing they say is like fifty k cash off the rip. Yeah, it sounds like the doorman from the Jeffersons. It's like, all right, uh, all right, Mr. J. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> and now and the crazy thing is too, man. They we, they had this uh, this scene last night. Um, for like Lorenzo's wake or whatever they call it. They don't call it a wake, but it's like the wake, you know, right. where they come by the house and stuff. And like a, almost like a repass, but. That's a repass, yeah. yeah. I'd never heard that. I had to look that up. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> but um, I'm a farm boy, okay? But uh, we don't do that. We just bury him and go like, shit. <laughs> Good luck. Nice. But, but, but man, having all these people come through the repass going um, in the house, just drop them what knots, like huge yeah. wads of cash. Like, there you go. And they don't even, it doesn't even phase them. They're just like, yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you. Just Put a on bag, the table. just a duffel bag just full of just <laughs> Sorry for hundreds your loss. and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's just kind of like, and I'm also going, who are all these people that just happen to have, you know, big ass Red, readily of available, <laughs> spendable cash? You know, it's funny because we're on the, uh, my kids are Jewish, so we're like on the bar mitzvah circuit. And so when they, there's a bar mitzvah, you're like, I got, I got to write a check for like a hundred bucks or something for the kids. That, this is different. This, it's like, different. hey, did you guys hear Lorenzo Tejada passed? And they're like, oh, shit, okay, uh, open the we, safe. Here we go. <laughs> crack it open. You go, all right. Here's no this. less than 10K. Will, yeah, that, it, will no. that do it? And they'd be like, I don't know, Monet might, that might be offended. She might be offended. And I would be, I would also be like, I wouldn't be like, hey, here, and just hand you a knot of cash. I'd be like, hey, I want to make sure that Monet knows that that, 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 that came, came from, from me. me. <laughs> so can you, um, I don't know, this is weird. Do you have like a sticky note? <laughs> you got like a, you got to make sure that she knows. The one thing that you don't want is you don't want that smoke from Monet. That's the no. one thing you don't want. No, so, no, she's, she's ruthless. Yeah, so make sure, and, and shout out to Jeremy. Jeremy, you're always going to be a uh, turtle to me, uh, but... Let's talk about Method Man and your relationship. You talk about Jerry? Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Ferrara, is that what Jerry, you're talking about? Yeah, Jerry is he, like... He, listen, he was great as Proctor, and he, he did hold it down, but I, I definitely would go with... And also, here's the other thing. I love Method Man. 
you know, and I love working with him. So I, I would always go with Method Man personally. How was how was that relationship off camera uh, with you and Meth? The best man. He's he's. I mean, you you know him, right? Yeah. He's, he's like, he's genuine. He shows he is who up. we say he is. He, yeah, he is, he who is, he is. And he's like, and he's a force of nature, man. I I was actually very jealous of him because he would come on set. I've been around, you know, and he showed up day one and just was like a, a ball of. Uh, it was like cocaine just walking into the room, you know? And and he had like all the, the background artists and like the crew and he would come in and he just he just would light shine. The room up. Yeah, he just light the room up and and he'd he'd be rapping and he'd be uh, you know, making jokes and um, and just like, you know, being him. And it's like it's magnetic and, and he and he really gives a shit about the work too, which I respect and he was always trying to like kind of go what what else is and he and he gain, has really gained respect as in this world because right. you know one of the things that's hard to do is to cross over. Well, it's not it's not actually that hard it's, to cross over. It's that it's it's hard to cross over and be respected be for respected. it. Okay. And people go, oh well, they're just getting this job because they're so and so, right? And they're just like they're famous and they're you know because that happens a lot. People just get people get work yeah. because they're a celebrity. Right. But can you hold it down? Are you believable? Yeah. Are you respected? Yeah. And I feel like he's really, really carved. Um, I think he's a, he's a great actor. I mean, he's winning awards out there. Do you guys ever hang out? Because I see you with meth as like the Blues Brothers. Like I can see you both out with like the black suit, the skinny tie. You guys are just like out having a great time on the town. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that Method does a lot of that. I keep asking him and he's just <laughs> like, yeah, bro, let me hit you back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> M-E-T-H-O-D. Yeah, man, um, he's the best. He's the best. He's, he's great. And he's also just a giant, too. No, he, he's, he's a dope in, individual. Uh, Shane, for you, um, one of the things I love about you, man, is you lead with humanity. And I want to ask you, we know who Cooper Sacks is, and we briefly met his family, but for you, um, what is your inspiration to wake up and do this every day? And do it to the best of your ability. Um, that, that's yeah, that's a great question. I I feel you know it's it changes over time. When I was getting into the business, it was it was kind of like oh I want to. I saw certain things for myself. I was like oh I want to be a superstar. I want to have. I don't know that I was ever about money. I just was like oh I want to have the ability to do the kind of projects I I, I see for myself. And that meant being a star. But as soon as I got married and started having kids, you know, it just becomes like, honestly, it's like, how can I provide for these kids and at the same time be, be a great example to them of right. somebody that's, that works hard and somebody that, uh, that has passion. My, the thing I try to instill in them is be passionate about something, you know? And the thing I'm passionate about is, is storytelling. It's not actually just acting, it's storytelling. I love writing, I love producing, I love, I, I love storytelling. And that's what I think good actors should be great storytellers, you know? Um, and so that's, and so for my kids, I'm like, hey, w what is the passion? And, and it's not for me to give it to them, it's for me to, to, to pull it out of them. And, um, and it changes because they're kids. They'll be like, oh, I want to be a, in the NBA. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then the next day, it's like, I want to be in the NFL, man. I'd be like, okay. It's like, I think I could be a gamer. It's like, all right, dude. I'm going to have a Twitch channel. It's like, all right, let's do that. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's just, just being supportive. But, but as you say that, as a working actor who's very successful, how have you been able to maintain or create that balance? Because your wife is a is an actress, your your kids are young. They're in the uh, de developmental stages of being, you know, yeah, yeah. young men, and you spend a, a quite a bit of time away from home. How do you maintain for for those who are watching and listening, saying, you know, I I want that life, but they don't realize if you put away the glitz and the glam, and you have to go home and take out the trash, right? Or you got to go yeah. home and wash the dishes. How does that balance work for you? Well, for me, I'll, t I'll be honest, I think it's kind of, 
I mean, realistically, it's slowed down my, my progress in my career, but I wouldn't have it any other way because yeah. like, I can't imagine, I mean, I'm blown away by like The Rock, for instance, who's just a- always on something. He's always on something like and I'm going, yeah, but I'm also going like, when does that man have time to be a husband and father? And even though I'm, I know he finds time, it can't be like what I'm doing. I'm getting no, up with he, my kids. I think I'm there's three of him. Feeding though. him. I'm, I'm taking him to school. I'm doing their homework with him. I'm at the games. And that's something that I wouldn't trade. Now, granted, listen, my kids are getting older. In a few years, they're out of the house. And then I'm going to, you know, it'll be a little bit different. I'll be able to focus differently. But for now, I, I like the balance. I like being a dad, being a husband, and then having, having my career be sustainable at a certain point. I mean, it's like, if I had spent the last, you know, 15 years, 16 years since I've been a dad, just grinding, grinding, grinding in the career, I could be much further along for sure. But, uh, but there's, would I, would I be okay at night with that sacrifice? Right. Because would you got to sacrifice something? That's why most marriages in this business don't work. It's why most, you know, most most of the guys that grow up in in this business don't have great relationships with their parents, you know, because you there's sacrifice. And so that balance is hard. And I applaud you and your wife, both working actors, but giving her her props, very supportive to allow yeah. you to, to live your dream, to once again, do it to the best of your ability. Yeah. Right. So she's incredible, man. She, Keely is, uh, she's better than I am. I mean, she's she's so. You've so told talented. me that. You've told me that before. He has told me that before. Uh, so she's so talented. He, he's she's funny. He's being honest, young lady. <laughs> you know her from like Malibu's Most Wanted and Pain and Gain. She's like, and a bunch of other crap. But she's like so so funny, so talented, so present, and she's an incredible singer. I mean, the, this this power thing was just a train, and you know when something like that comes along, you just kind of go, okay, we're doing that. Right. You know, so. She's it, been amazing. Is the goal for the both of you to potentially be at the same place at the same time to film something? That's always been, you know, our dream. And we've done that quite a bit. We've done, like, you know, probably five or six projects together. And those are always the best. Like, we just filmed a, in Hawaii. We filmed a, a, a movie together. And, I mean, it's, it's so awesome to be able to wake up, go, hey, when do you need to be on set? And she's like, I don't know, when do you need to be on set? <laughs> You know, that, that's, that's, that's the best. That's the best. And um, so, yeah, that would be my, if, you know, especially if it's in my hands, if I could go out and produce and control some stuff, I would always want to work with her, for sure. That's a beautiful thing. We're embarking on the 50 year of the anniversary of hip hop. And, and you say you come from, you're like, you're like a country boy in the cut, but for you, how has hip hop influenced you? And, and if so, like, what were you listening to um, in your formative years as it pertains to hip hop? Well, hip hop has become, you know, my favorite genre. Um, like I love to dance, you know, I grew up kind of uh, turbo and ozone, you know, like I grew up uh, breaking to electric boogaloo, you know, like that, that was my stuff. Like I, I, I started off wanting to be a dancer and um, break dancing and stuff like that. So that was my passion. and. But formative wise, in terms of music, uh, it was it was like Jimi Hendrix, Led mm-hmm. Zeppelin, and I think it was just because those are the tapes I had in my car. Right, those are <laughs> classic artists, though. Those are oh man, without a doubt. And um, and then after that, I'm, being from Washington State, you know, I was really into Pearl Jam, and you know, uh, kind of was into Nirvana when I was younger, but not so much. But Chris Cornell, who was, you oh, know, yes. and and. Um, who was like in Temple of the Dog and Audio Slave and um, just the, the, you know, he's gone now, but he was, uh, he was, to me, he's my favorite, favorite voice. Um, Omari actually did a, a track from the, of Chris Cornell track, that Black Hole Sun. Mm. He did it with his what daughter. Up, pretty, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to O. So was hip hop big out there? Or not I mean, so much? How did, how did you find hip hop? Like, out there, like was there a local record store, but you kind of had to dig for it. Like, what was that music scene out there? 
No, I would th I would think like a lot of people my age, you know, I think it's just, you know, the the rise of MTV and you know, uh, VH1 and those kinds of that's that's was my access to to hip hop, I would think, because no, it wasn't like those artists weren't coming around touring in my farm town. Right. You know, it wasn't like, oh, you know, Method Man or Rap Man live <laughs> down at the barn. Yeah, that just didn't happen. Um, but but I love it. I love I love. Uh, I, I guess I love beat. You know, I love that that. You got rhythm. Yeah, I love that rhythm. So that's that's really I think why I like hip hop so much. So I wanna I just wanna get to it because you guys may have seen it, may have not, but the time Fixing. has come uh, to talk about this. Um, Shane, you had a good run, bro. Yeah, it's a good run. Longest cast member. Um, doing as too of much. Now. As do, of now. Doing too much. Moving a little crazy and sticking your nose where it need not be. Um, R.I.P. Cooper Sacks. R.I.P. Cooper Sacks, yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel good, you know. I feel good. It's like bittersweet. It's bittersweet. It's been such a big part of my life, you know. Um, but... Uh, but I'm proud. I'm proud of of, of all of it, and I, I think it's the. But even with his girl, like it was just all L's, everything's right? L, right? But but his, his and I love his that. family, his girl, his everything, his, all the court cases. Like it's just constant L's, and so I think that to me, what I what I took that as is like this this last season is that the gloves were off and he was like I, I i the desperation the desperation to try to get even i gotta get something He's trying to get back to 500 at, at the very least yeah and so that's when he got sloppy sloppy never wins sloppy. when this now all said and done what do you want people to remember the most about what you brought to that character for the culture i mean the thing that i'm i think the thing that i'm most proud of that i brought to cooper Sachs was humor you know because I feel like, first of all, I feel like a show like this needs that. You need to have moments where you go like, you know, if it's just murder and, you know, if it was just sex, that's one thing that's porn up. But if it's just, <laughs> if it's just sex and murder and drugs and stuff like that. It gets a little redundant. Yeah, and it also feels like you, you want, like you said earlier, you want, you want some humanity. And the fact is, is that people are, you know, most of the people, most people we want to be around, they've got some levity, they've got some humor, and so I was like, let me bring some, some kind of off-color humor to this, and try to find a way to make, to make light of it. Like even my relationship with Davis, is I feel like there's levity to it, there's humor to it. There, even when he would say some snarky stuff to me, I, just the the way he would Cooper would take it would always just kind of be like, oh, you know, well, right, you know, humor with his girl, humor with, uh, you know, certainly. And you have to, to, to get through these days. I mean, if you think about the amount of bodies that are stacked up around Cooper Sacks. Oh, it's a bunch of them. His entire office, you know, like, if you, by the way, if, if, if you ever work in a, in a U.S. attorney's office and, and, and literally the entire floor is murdered, you, you got, you know, don't, you, don't, don't, you, don't get And you did bad at that job, too. I mean, you just <laughs> L's, it's L's. Just L's, man. All my friends dying, yeah. I, I, love, I love your spirit and your energy regarding what you've done, if, if you can go back through the seasons, you got nine lives, I want you to kind of remind, how many people would have killed you already up to this point? We know Ghost would have got you. Certainly, I mean, Tommy wanted to, right? Tommy, 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 Tommy had, had no, he had a gun to my head and, um, and a bag over my head. And that was back in season six, right? I think so he you know that was that was the first like oh boy you know right um, but I think it started getting really when like Greg Knox died and then you know then when Leela got killed and then David Fumero who played uh, the Mike Sandoval you know uh, and he was kind of he kind of worked for Lobos but but you know having all those people in the office die like that Agent Donovan it was just kind of like Man, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, the nine lives started stacking up. And I, one of my favorite, one of my favorite bits was, uh, I think it was with Monique, um, who uh, plays Blanca. And she, 
she, I, I'm saying, like, I'm looking at the board, the crime board, and I'm going, like, you know, who's the common denominator with all of these murders, all these deaths? I'm like, James St. Patrick. And she goes, and you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, like, yeah, hey, you, you, you might be right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the list, the list is long, only for you to get to this point. Crazy, man. I feel like, you know, in a lot of respects, I feel like Cooper Sacks dying, and maybe this is just because it's me, but I feel like Cooper Sacks dying is like a chapter in the Power Universe that's not, that's kind of closed. It's kind of yeah. shifting from OG Power Universe to to a new world, because. That you know, unless they bring Tasha back or Tommy comes back into this universe, it's just Michael, you know, and um, that's it. And so it's kind of like a new brand, a new show, and and me going away is kind of like peeling away that last vestige of you know right. of the the anchor of power. And and so you will, I'll be really interested to see to see uh, the new iteration of the show and kind of how it how it progresses into the next into the next season. Between both series for you, what has been one of the most memorable moments filming? Um, well, certainly something that I'll never that I'll never shake is the uh, the the intimate scenes, the sex scenes, because those were uh, just as a human being, those were like hard to <laughs> hard to confront. So that those will always be there. I think the I think probably my my favorite, my favorite scene was probably the scene where, where Ghost and Tommy almost killed me. Um, just because it was like getting right to that brink and it was intense, it was physical. It also started off with me like watching porn masturbating, if you remember, and then they break in. I mean, it was just like, it had all the things that Shane is just like, yeah. You know, watching some, some lesbian porn, which is what it was. And they come breaking in, and then and my pants around my ankles. It was like you know, the, and then they almost kill me. I was like that. That that scene had uh, it was uh, fulfilling because it was, you know, it told a, it told a great story, and it was fun. It was it was, uh, and I survived it. What are you gonna miss the most? The, the people, the cast and crew. You know, that's now. That being said, I'm I'm friends with a lot of them, and that that won't stop. But the day to day, being able to see these guys and um, and and connect with them on on a weekly basis will certainly be missed. You know, um, like I said, become good buddies with with Method and being able to work with him was just such a joy. And 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 you know, and I'm in L.A. and so uh, a lot of these guys are out here, and so it's it's hard. It's 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 hard. But out there, I mean, I got David Kumara out there, Sung, okay, okay, Andy Bean. You know, those guys are like my, we, we hang out. So and you, you're going to be all right out there. Yeah, I'm all right. And, and, um, and I'm, you know, I got some things cooking. So I, I'm excited to see, uh, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited. I got a lot of, a lot of irons in the fire and, uh, and big dreams. So. I'm, I'm excited for you. We're excited for you. Shane, brother, um, thank you for giving us the best Cooper Sacks that we've, thank you, man. we've seen. And the only your contribution, <laughs> your contribution to this power universe, and, and uh, brother, you go on places, man, and Thank we're gonna you, be man. rooting for you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the incredibly talented, dope, hip hop loving Shane Johnson. Thank you for stopping by, it's your Thanks, man, man June Archer. This is the Winter Circle. Thank y'all for tuning in. Listen, when you have the opportunity to tell somebody that you love them. Be sure to tell them because it may be the last opportunity that you have to do so. Peace.